Right, um, so I'd like to start by just saying thank you very much first to Kerry for your presentation earlier. And um, what I want to try and achieve in this presentation is to explore in a bit more detail um, some of the issues surrounding plastic and compost compostable bags when we get into the nitty gritty. Um, so you don't need to sit, look far to see that the problem of plastic is now a really big issue. Um, Blue Planet has been followed by a raft of programs such as Drowning in Plastic, Ending the Plastic Age, anti-plastic groups on social media abound, with recent notable success from campaign group 38 Degrees who forced Walker's Crisps to launch its own recycling scheme for empty crisp packets with private recycling company TerraCycle. Um, consumers are proactively objecting to unnecessary or unrecyclable plastic. Um, in fact, twice last week, retailers actually contacted me to object to polystyrene <coughs> used in their delivery. Um, now, fortunately, we were able to reassure them that it was actually compostable starch chippings that dissolve in water. But the fact that the challenge was raised shows how people are more concerned than ever with plastic waste. Um, Kerry mentioned um, that recent research has shown that um, reducing waste and more, using more recyclable materials will be the top concern for consumers over the next decade, even more so than price. The environmental problems posed by plastic waste has led to national and international responses, including the UK Plastics Pact, which calls for 100% of all plastic packaging to be recyclable, reusable or compostable by 2025. And this in itself was a response to the International Ellen MacArthur Foundation report, The New Plastics Economy, Rethinking the Future of Plastics. Manufacturers to retailers have signed up to the UK Plastics Pact and announced different visions, policies and targets. At the beginning of this year, Iceland announced its intention to become plastic free by 2023. This was rapidly followed by co-op's move towards compostable carrier bags and Waitrose's introduction of compostable bags for fruit and veg. Paper Chase have launched revised guidelines for its suppliers aiming for all packaging to be recyclable or compostable by the autumn of 2019. Even Princess Eugenie's wedding was plastic free. The eco-friendly car company started using compostable bags made from PLA, corn starch, um, all the way back in 2006 as a way of minimising our environmental footprint. We wanted to avoid using oil based plastic and were excited by innovations in the packaging market made from bio based materials, which are also certified as being compostable. But is compostable film the most environmentally responsible option? If we use bags, should we use plastic instead and aim for it to be recycled? What are the pros and cons of PLA versus OPP? So, Kerry mentioned polypropylene is recyclable um, and approximately 10% of all wooded plastics, so for example food pots and trays are made from polypropylene. The big question for the card industry is whether polypropylene film can be recycled at a post-consumer level, as film, even if it is made from a commonly recyclable material, poses big challenges for the recycling industry. Um, Kerry mentioned the um, 2017 UK Household Plastic Survey from Recoup stated that 90% of local authorities were collecting plastic film at curbside for recycling. This had dropped from the previous year from 80 to 75 local authorities. However, when you scratch below the surface it becomes apparent the majority of schemes only accepted carrier bags, i.e. polythene, and not mixed consumer film. Furthermore, many local authorities struggled to find a market for the film they had collected. The new issued 2018 Recoup report states a further decline in plastic film recycling at curbside to only 17%. This is now even less than was collected back in 2011. Recoup also states 
they believe much of the collected household film is either baled and exported or, re or used in energy from waste facilities, i.e. they are collecting it and burning it. There are a number of issues that prevent film from being compatible um, with existing recycling collections. Um, mixed recycling facilities, that's the place where your recyclable waste goes after it leaves the curbside. Um, those facilities find that film contaminates um, uh, uh, established bottle and paper recycling lines and it clogs sorting equipment. Rigid plastics are often sorted using near infrared, that's NIR technology, and this same technology could be used to sort film, but dedicated NAR sorting of film requires multi-million pound investment. I've been grateful for the input of Mike Baxter from RPC BPI, who are the largest film manufacturer and recycler in the UK. Most of the material they recycle is pre-consumer waste or closed loop, for example, waste from the agricultural industry. He states when it comes to mixed consumer film, the technology may be there, but the economics aren't. Even if it was collected and recycled here in the UK, he asks, would there be a market for the end product? It's incredibly expensive to produce and low quality. Bernard Chase from RAP agrees that only the best quality post-use polythene films are recycled by companies in the UK. And regarding the bags collected at supermarkets, which again is only for polythene and not polypropylene, those bags you put in your supermarket collection bins are most probably traded to overseas markets. It's very hard to get an audit trail on this. There was one company set up with significant investor and taxpayer funding specifically to recycle the grubbier end of the polythene recycling stream, and that failed miserably in less than two years. Back in 2016, RAP did undertake trials sorting post-consumer film, which has shown it is possible, but questions really remain over the economic benefit, and it's worth that these trials were sorting and reprocessing polythene film again, not polypropylene. I've had many conversations with people in this industry, and I haven't found one organisation that says it deals with mixed post-consumer film collected at curbside. In other words, there is no evidence of recycling of post-consumer polypropylene film here in the UK. I asked one film manufacturer what they thought of a recyclable message being printed on polypropylene bags. They came back and said, it's insane. Insane because it could contaminate the potential for future polythene recycling. Insane because it might be manufactured, recycled here in the UK. And insane because it makes people think they're recycling something when at best it is being bundled and sent to who knows where in the Far East, out of sight and out of mind. And this is the final problem with plastic film. Towards the end of 2017, the Chinese government announced that it would ban the import of all post-consumer plastics. Other Far East countries stepped in, but found they couldn't cope with the volume. The flood of material spooked national governments who did not want to be seen as a dumping ground for low-grade plastics. As a result, places like Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam and Taiwan have completely banned the import of plastics. So maybe it's inevitable that more and more film is being incinerated here in the UK. In fact, just last week, Swindon Council announced that it wants to burn plastic as fuel over concerns that instead of being recycled, it ends up in foreign landfills, or worse. <coughs> they stated, I wouldn't be happy if that little scrap of plastic from Swindon ends up in a dolphin's stomach. I'm sure most of us feel the same about our car bags. <clears throat> Only 47% of rigid household plastic is packaging is currently recycled and with recycling targets for local authorities based on tonnage it will be no surprise if efforts are focused on improving recycling rates amongst these easier to recycle items rather than film. As we keep state it is unlikely more film collections will be added without significant financial investment or incentives. 
The future, therefore, does not look bright for the recycling of post-consumer plastic film. So, at this point, you may expect me to say the solution lies in compostable bioplastics, specifically in PLA, as that's the bags we use, but actually that's not completely straightforward either. Now, when I refer to bioplastics, I mean, I'm actually meaning certified compostable materials, such as those made of starch or cellulose. I definitely don't mean oxo-degradable plastics, which we warned against during our first environmental talk here, all the way back in 2007. Oxo-degradable plastics have been widely criticised for breaking down into microplastic fragments and are already banned in several EU countries. Almost 25% of bioplastic produced globally in 2017 was PLA, and PLA bags, as Kay mentioned, are available for greeting cards. Um, typically, it costs three or four times the cost of OPP. Um, we have used the film for over 10 years for both single cards, for Christmas card packs, and even for calendars. Um, the bags have never started to decompose in a retail environment. They do sound and feel more crackly than PP. They're very transparent. I'm very happy with them. Um, I've, I've spoken to bag manufacturer Rapid, and they have told me they have used PLA for both flow wrapping, closed and wallet wrap cards. Not something that we do. All of our cards are individually, all our products are individually handbagged. But I thought it was interesting that Rapid had had that experience. Um, we use a film called Nativia, and the raw material from this comes from NatureWorks, and this diagram illustrates the cycle of manufacture of film, composting and crops. There is a little short loop in there, which um, shows that actually PLA can also be recycled and turned back into PLA resin, although currently this only actually happens in a few places in the world. So the PLA we use is certified as industrially compostable by the EU standard EN13432, which is represented by the seedling logo. EN13432 bioplastics can also be certified by the OK Compost Scheme but by Vincot, and Vincot also operate a home compostable logo as well. So a film that looks like polypropylene that comes from a natural resource and can compost down sounds wonderful, but with a, as with all things, it does have its critics. What it doesn't do is break down on a cold compost heap. They don't get hot enough, which means unless you are a hot composting enthusiast, it needs to go to an industrial composting site. An additional criticism of compostable packaging is that it doesn't actually get composted but just ends up in landfill and releases methane. Additionally, compostables have been blamed for taking up land that could be used for food, and also are perceived as a threat to the recyclers of conventional plastics because of the fear of contamination. When wet food waste is sent to landfill, it does break down and release methane, so it's logical to think that compostable packaging would do the same thing. However, um, tests have shown that PLA is inert in typical landfill conditions, as land those landfill conditions don't contain enough water for PLA to break down. Now, I'm, I'm not actually surprised about this research. Um, there was a BBC programme recently called The Secret Life of Landfill, um, and it showed an excavation of a landfill site from the 1960s, and in it they unearthed the newspaper. Um, from the 60s, where you could actually take the newspaper out and you could turn and read the pages of the newspaper, even though it had been landfilled for 60 years. Um, astonishingly, it hardly changed at all. When I raised the question of PLA breaking down and releasing methane in landfill sites with David Newman of the um, Biodegradable Industries Association, that's the BBIA, he challenged me to find any research that says that PLA does release methane in landfill, saying he didn't know of any, and um, I haven't been able to find any either. Oops, 
Um, the other criticism I mentioned is that um, bioplastics are competing for food and land use. Um, in Europe, bioplastics use 0.06% of farmland, it's very small, um, compared to pasture for meat that uses 67% of land. Maybe if we are concerned about land use, we should all start eating less meat. <laughs> but more seriously, what I hadn't realised until recently was that corn grown for PLA is not just turned into PLA, but also used for food and other industrial uses. Na Nature Work states the following. The question is not about choosing only food or biopolymers for, from corn, rather the opportunity is for food and biopolymers. Biorefineries convert all parts of a harvested crop into food, feed, materials and fuel, maximising the crop's total value. So, going back to the issue of recycling, some are concerned that compostable plastics could contaminate existing recycling streams. Now I would agree that this is a concern for bottles, where well-established recycling schemes are already in place. For these items, I'm not sure if you could justify using a compostable plastic instead of a recyclable one. Now, the BBIA, that's the, sort of the trade association for compostable industry, um, don't see the role of compostables as replacing all forms of plastic packaging, but instead for them to be used as a valid solution for packaging where effective recycling doesn't exist. This includes, for example, a lot of food packaging and film, which takes us back to the issue of film recycling and the concern that compostable packaging may cause contamination. As already discussed, recycling schemes for post-consumer plastic film barely exist. It's not actually possible to contaminate something that doesn't exist. If in the future, cost-effective recycling of post-consumer film must be developed, tests have shown there can be between 3 and 5% of PLA in recyclate without it causing a problem. Furthermore, the same infrared technology that will be used for sorting out different types of conventional plastic film can also be used to separate out PLA. So, in my view, the worry about contamination is actually a bit of a red herring. So, on to composting. Only a small percentage of UK homes actually use a compost heap, but many more have either food or garden waste collections. However, the availability of such collections and where it ends up varies widely across the UK. For example, in England it's estimated that only 30% of local authorities offer food waste collections, whereas in Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, all councils offer this. Now, I know we're facing Brexit, but it's worth noting that food waste collections will be obligatory across the EU by the end of 2023. The UK currently sends 7.5 million tonnes of food waste to incineration. The BBIA's vision is that by increasing industrial composting, we can meet targets to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, produce renewable energy and return nutrients to the soil. It's a win-win situation. So, if a member of the public puts a PLA bag into a caddy with food waste or with their garden waste, what happens then? The food waste can go in one of three directions, wet or dry anaerobic digestion, known as AD, or industrial composting. Dry AD would accommodate the packaging, but there are only a few of those plants here in the UK. If it goes to wet AD, all, all packaging, even compostable caddy liners, are stripped out and sent for incineration. This is very different to some parts of Europe where compostable materials are mainstream. For example, in Italy, compostable packaging is removed by AD plants and then composted. Back in the UK, if EN 13432 certified packaging is sent to an industrial composting site, it will compost, as it is normally at the end of the process that residual waste, such as plastic, is screened out. It's not compostable materials, but plastic, that is a big problem for composters, as you can see from this photo, courtesy of the Organics Recycling Group. 
Disposal of contaminants such as plastic in composting facilities can cost each facility up to £100,000 a year. There are over 200 certified composters in the UK as well as many more uncertified ones. This does not mean they all officially accept compostable packaging, but they don't accept plastic either, and you can see it ends up there. What is significant is that the UK does have the infrastructure to deal with compostables, but the logistics of getting it there is a challenge. Most local authorities have no clear guidelines for the public regarding any compostable packaging. There is also a gaping hole when it comes to clear labelling on compostables. And satisfied with just having the seedling logo on the back of our car, bag, car bags, um, I've been asking for guidance regarding a recognised call to action for consumers to clearly explain what the material is and how to dispose of it. But there isn't anything there. Even though Wraps Plastic Pact includes compostables within its targets, not much work seems to have been done on this front at all. It seems little more than a vision. The on pack recycling label scheme are not due to look at compostables until 2020. Despite this lack of leadership, it is encouraging to hear of work being done by the composting and bioplastics industry, which is actively addressing the fact that labelling on compostables is far from optimal. It's also working on information for local authorities. I would also like to think that hopefully, in the future, the card industry could be lobbying for better labelling and collection of compostable film. It's ironic that plastic film is being collected by 17% of local authorities, but it has nowhere to go, yet compostables are not promoted for collection by local authorities, even though there are industrial composting sites throughout the UK. I do feel quite impatient as I want to find ways of making compostable packaging more easily recognised today. I am frustrated as I want more local authorities to be collecting compostables now. But I am reminded in the world of packaging, bioplastics are still the new kids on the block and the waste industry has a lot of catching up to do. Now the focus of this talk has been on disposal but um, I think it's important to reflect on another bigger environmental crisis. Last week, there was an international report on the impact of global warming. It talked of the unprecedented nature of the changes that are required if we are to limit warming to 1.5 degrees C. Reducing the global emissions of CO2 by the required 45% by 2030 will require urgent, large-scale changes from governments and individuals. The Ellen MacArthur report highlights that considerable greenhouse gas emissions are associated with the production and sometimes the after pathway of plastics. In 2012, these emissions accounted for approximately 390 million tonnes of CO2 for all plastics. This greenhouse gas footprint will become even more significant with the projected surge in consumption. Research from the University of Columbia has stated that bioplastics do produce significantly fewer greenhouse gas emissions than traditional plastics over their lifetime. And a 2017 study determined that switching from traditional plastic to corn-based PLA would cut greenhouse gas emissions by 25%. Additionally, RAP state, bio-based plastics usually have a lower carbon impact in their extraction and production phase, where conventional plastics enter energy from waste facilities, they emit greenhouse gases, which can be higher than combusting coal or natural gas to generate the same amount of energy. In energy recovery, bioplastics, however, are considered carbon neutral. If most of our film is currently being incinerated, maybe compostable is the best option for reducing our carbon footprint. It's a time of great innovation. I have focused on PLA, but there are other, other sort of compostable materials that we could consider. Um, there's transparent cellulose, which although it presents some technical challenges, are also home compostable. More materials are being de developed all the time using food waste and byproducts from agriculture. Some using seaweed, some even using just CO2. In that BBC programme, The Secret Life of Landfill, the presenter took a bag made from cassava 
dissolved it in water, and then drank it. Our supplier of PLA bags, Shorepack, has reported enormous growth in compostable packaging, especially from the food industry. Despite my feelings of impatience and frustration, the potential of current innovation offers enormous hope if us as individual, for us as individuals to make the right choices. Even if you offer naked cards, you may need bags for some customers. You may need them for Christmas card packs. You may need them for other stationary items. Having spoken to many people involved in the plastics and recycling industry, in composting and those manufacturing compostable products, I believe if you need to use a bag for greeting cards, at the moment, PLA is still the right choice. Compostables may still be more expensive, but what are the environmental costs of just carrying on using traditional plastic? When I spoke to Hazel Walker from Paper Chase, she said their new packaging policy wasn't so much about responding to customer demand, but wanting to do the right thing about the company's own responsibility. Paper Chase are right to think this way. It's not enough just to print a little triangle with a number five on the back of your bags. It's not enough just to wait and hope that plastic film recycling may become viable at some random point in time in the future. It's about doing the right thing and doing it now. Whether we choose naked cards or compostable film, we can banish plastic film from our industry if we want to. Once again, the environmental genie is out of the bottle. Changes on the cards. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh.